In many parts of the world, wild and potentially dangerous animals are held in captivity and used as drawing cards for tourism. On the surface, these arrangements seem harmless, especially when the animals are cared for and visitors are able to learn about them at close range. But more often than not, wild animals give in to their natural instincts, and in these primal moments, we witness what happens when man tries to tame the innately untamable. This episode takes us to a game reserve in South Africa near the small town of Cullinan, where a man was mauled to death by the lions that he raised ever since they were cubs. Hit that like and subscribe button if you're new. You're watching When Animals Attack. The Mahala View Lodge is nestled in the conservancy just 25 miles from the capital, in the Gauteng province. The lodge was owned by Leon Van Billion, who lived on site with his family. Among the inhabitants of the privately owned Bushveld Escape were three captive lions named Rambo, Katrine, and Nikita, who all stayed in enclosures on the property. The conservancy in which the lodge is located borders the Dinokang Game Reserve, a 74,000 acre park that attracts many visitors to the area to view the Big Five, Plains Game, as well as an array of other animals that roam the savanna grasslands in this high felt Shangri La. In addition to its idyllic accommodations, game drives, and conference facilities, the lodge also offers exclusive lion lectures and feedings. Van Billion became known as the Lion Man, and photographs would reveal the close and interactive relationship he shared with his lions. It was clear that there was little fear between them, as the boundary between man and beast seemingly dissolved. According to South African law, indigenous wild animals like lions can be kept for exhibition purposes provided the owner has a valid permit. Interestingly, the permit holder does not need to be a certified or trained wildlife expert. This means that anyone who has the funds to house a lion, satisfy its basic living requirements, and secure the necessary permit is legally able to own one of the most feared predators on the planet. Crowned the king of the jungle, the mighty lion is ironically no stranger to human domination. In fact, for centuries, people have tried to tame and domesticate this iconic member of the cat family, from Middle Eastern sheikhs and royals to circus performers and big cat enthusiasts. In South Africa, most captive lions live in zoos, wildlife parks, and even sanctuaries, where the primary business is usually tourism. Visitors to these facilities are treated to close interactions and often marvel at the level of domestication exhibited by the lions. And while seemingly successful to the layman, animal behavior experts understand that wild animals can never truly be tamed. And moreover, keeping wild animals in captivity often leads us to negative ecological impact, not to mention the ethical considerations for essentially caging an animal that is meant to roam territories of up to 150 square miles. And another factor that has recently grown in relevance is that contact between wild animals and humans may facilitate spread of zoonotic diseases. And we all now know how that can turn out. So while disease is not a factor in this story, it nevertheless ends in tragedy. The Billion family acquired the property in 1985 and built the lodge from the ground up, which they named Mahala View Lodge. Somewhat controversially, Mahala is the Zulu word for something that has been obtained without payment or effort. Van Billion's two daughters would grow up at the lodge, and in 2006, he acquired four lion cubs, two males and two females. One of the males was sold shortly after being acquired, and the three remaining cubs would be raised on the property, even sleeping with their owners. The lions would eventually grow to become special attractions at the lodge, drawing in visitors which included school groups. Van Bullion would teach the children and other guests about lions and their relationship with God. On one fateful August afternoon towards the end of the South African winter in 2019, a 70-year-old Van Bullion entered the enclosure of the lions he called his children. He had grown used to being inside the enclosure with them, feeling confident in the bond that they had formed over the 30 years that the lions had been under his care. As Van Bullion turned his back to mend a fence that was broken, one of the lions pounced on his back, digging its sharp claws into his shoulders and piercing its teeth into the back of his neck. Emergency services were alerted, as well as neighboring staff and landowners who rushed to the lodge to offer assistance. Two of the lions had already been shot by the time the ambulance arrived, but the paramedics could not access the enclosure until all three lions were killed. By the time they got to Van Bullion, he was covered in blood and had already succumbed to his injuries. And in just a moment, an instant that mirrored many others across the country, the captor became the victim. The lodge would go on to confirm the death of the Lion Man on its Facebook page that read, Great loss for everyone. Rest in peace, Uncle Leon. And this was written without any mention of the three lions that had been executed and been part of the family for over a decade. As the public eventually got wind of what happened, thoughts and sympathies from many would pour in for the Van Bullion family, and animal rights groups expressed their feelings about the outcomes for the lions, while conservation bodies highlighted the risks and impacts of keeping dangerous animals in captivity. 
Fiona Miles, the director of the animal welfare organization of Four Paws South Africa, would go on to express her condolences before stating that attacks can be avoided by not allowing unnecessary human-wildlife interaction. She would also go on to say that no matter how habituated or tame captive lions may seem, they remain unpredictable and instinctive, as at the end of the day, these are wild animals. Interestingly, Van Bullion's family seemed unmoved by the objections, having no regrets about living and working in close quarters with the lions. And while they were saddened by the loss of the patriarch who was a respected member of the community, as well as their family, they were reportedly at peace, stating that he left the earth at the hands of his children. Van Bullion's daughter, Leonette Van Wyck, who was 46 at the time, later told reporters that she knew her father lived a very full life and had answered what they believed to be a calling from God, not only to raise lions, but to teach people about them. What's also really interesting to take away from this story is the frequency of such encounters. Although wildlife experts deem them inevitable, South Africa is the only country in the world that has three classes of lions. These are wild, managed, or captive. Roughly 8,000 lions are kept in private facilities across the country, and many end up being shot in canned trophy hunts, a highly controversial offshoot of the captive carnivore industry, whereby lions are amongst the animals hunted in confined spaces and have little to no chance of escape. And all of these activities of course are highly profitable and have resulted in a spike in animal attacks and fatal encounters over the last few decades. In fact, just six months before the Mahala View attack, a woman was mauled to death by a lion at the nearby Kevin Richardson Wildlife Sanctuary. And between 1996 and 2020, 58 lion attacks were recorded in South Africa alone, a third of which were fatal. Nearly all the fatalities involved lions, and 14 of the victims were children. What's worse yet is that these numbers don't even account for the large number of unreported incidents. In the wild, attacks by lions are rare, and just like other predators, lions are important players in the African ecosystems, as they play a vital role in controlling herbivore population numbers. But in captivity, their value is reduced to whatever profit they can generate for their owners. And animal rights activists and conservationists continue to strive for an end to the captive carnivore industry, and for legislation that allows lions and other indigenous animals to be wild and free, just as nature intended. If this episode piqued your interest, then our previous episode, featuring the most brutal grizzly bear attack of all time, is likely to do the same. You can find it on the end screen of this video. <laughs>